revisit this teaching on today. Praise God for the family members of Sister Mary. Amen. Those who live here and those who don't come into worship. Amen. On today. Come on, somebody. Praise God for that. And we speak the strength of God. Psalm 62, verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. The Bible says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Talking about power moves, and one of the things that needed you to understand is that just because God repeats himself, it does not mean that he is losing power. That God repeats himself for our benefit because he wants us to receive every opportunity possible to respond to his word to respond to his word. We found out, glory to God, that the phrase power moves has been noted as both in a negative connotation and a positive connotation. Just to remind you, number one, we said that power moves would be making decisions and carrying out plans to further your standing both socially and financially. And then we said that when one pulls a stunt, remember that, when one pulls a stunt that shows he has outdone others and retains complete control of the situation and dares anyone to challenge this. Oftentimes we dwell on the negative connotation because we can count the number of stunts that people pull to show they have power. For them to demonstrate to you to have you to think that they have power. That's right. Look at your name. I know some people who pull some stunts. Some people who pull some stunts. <laughs> you all know it. We might have to say that today. Did you see that stunt they pulled? <laughs> How many people know the devil gets no victory? And so our working definition for this series is that God, who is sovereign and has all power, makes moves on the behalf of faith-filled believers and shows that he will always be superior to anyone or anything that comes against you and retain complete control of any situation in your life and draws you in a place of authority where the enemy nor his agents can do you any harm. So now when the devil pulls his studs, he's just creating a show. Uh -huh. He does it to gain an audience. And I found out that the more audience and ear you give to the devil, the more he likes to act up. <laughs> but when you start to ignore the devil, uh -huh. well, the Bible says resist him. Resist him. That's right. And he will flee. I, I, I come to help you to resist some of the stunts of the devil and the devil's people. Uh -huh. Okay. And when you resist their stunts, they might carry on for a while uh, but after a while, they understand that they can't do anything to ruffle your feathers. They can't do anything to make you upset. And so they just move on to the next person with the next stunt. Uh, ask your neighbor, have you recognized anybody pulling stunts in your life? <laughs> I am so confident in God because he keeps reading reiterating into us that he is the one that has all power and authority. Well, let's look at a few things. Look at Romans chapter 8 and uh, beginning at verse 16 and we'll go down to 17. Romans 
chapter 8. And let's look at verses 16 and 17. The Bible says that the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You need to underline that. That God's Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now he says you need to be able to build confidence in who you are in God. The devil would do many things to make it appear as if you don't have power with God. To make it appear as if God has abandoned you. But he says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are, somebody shout, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are the children of God. Somebody shout, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Come on, and you don't need to let anybody come against that. You are the child of God. Now, when you're the child of God, you understand that it comes with certain benefits and rewards. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Um, because who are you, because of who you're connected with, there are certain benefits that come and privileges that come with your connection. Uh -huh. And so now you don't need to doubt your connection with God because when you doubt your connection with God, then you don't utilize the fullness of his power and his authority. Amen. You know, I like to talk about my children. Uh, Jordan was real little, and one day I went in the office. They made it to the office before I did, and Jordan was sitting in my chair, turning around. So, Dad, exactly what day do I take over this operation? <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with first things first. Dude, how about you get saved for real? Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So now he starts out by saying, you need to understand that we are the children of God, together 
with Christ and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He says, first you all are joint in with Christ. He says you have access to that same power. Then uh, Paul turns around and he tells us, he says, when we were even dead in our sins, that when God quickened in Jesus' body with the power of the Holy Ghost, when he got up, it was just like we got up as well. And then he changed his position after his experience. His change of position is that he is no longer dead in a grave. But the Bible says he is now seated in heavenly places and we who are saved have also changed positions. We are seated up there with him. Amen. So now when we're seated in the place of authority at the right hand of God, you know that you are a joint heir with Christ. Uh -huh. You know that you have access to the power and have been placed in the rightful position to utilize that power. Now the devil is mad. And the devil will do anything to make you deny the power and to step out of position. Oh God, can help me in here. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you step out of line. Don't step out of line. Because the devil is acting a nut. You better catch this in the spirit. Favor with God and favor with man. 
I want you to get that. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, I have the power, I have the power to have favor, to have favor with, God with God and with man. And with man. All right, God. I, I feel you're pushing me on something. Okay, all right. And so, and so verse 7 says, y'all ready for this? Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So now he's calling people with the same grace, the same favor, the same anointing of power to take some action now. He says, if you seek, you're going to find. Uh -huh. If you knock, some doors going to be open. If you ask, I'm going to give you some things. Uh -huh. Verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receive. Uh -huh. And he that seeketh, you're going to find. And to him that knocketh, he says it's going to open to you. Watch verse 9. You ready? Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give what? Good things to them that do what? To go that. So now, watch this. Whatever you desire of the Lord, you have the power. You have the position. You have the authority to ask for it and he'll give it to you. Now the devil's plan is to make you doubt that that formula works. But once you renew your mind and shift your mindset to believe that I am a joint heir with Christ. Yes. And wherever Christ sits, there I am in the position of authority. So now let me give you a few points. That now I understand the power, the favor, the grace that I have with God. So now whenever God speaks, I expect his power to manifest. Amen. Say it with me, whenever God speaks, whenever God speaks I expect his power, I expect his power to, manifest. to manifest. Let me give you this, Hebrews 4 and 12. The Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I need you to understand that. He is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. He, he can pick a person's thoughts to pieces and look at their real intentions of their heart. So now this is where the devil tried to take advantage of us. Because of our cruel experience, when we are approached by certain people, we tend to overanalyze the situation. That's what you mean by that. You put your thoughts in it, but God says, let my word go to work. And when his word goes to work, it's powerful enough to expose the thoughts of man. Amen. And to expose the intentions of their hearts. Amen. I said all that to say this. Don't you worry about being shipped up by any man. Amen. The stuff the devil is pulling right now, God already knows what the devil is planning and what he is trying to do. Your job is to stay
his power. Whenever we embrace the power, uh, embrace the gospel, we should expect his power. Paul says in Romans, he says, so as much as in me is, he says, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And he says, for I am persuaded, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe that somebody shout, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the power of God. I, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. And when you understand that the gospel talks about the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, that whenever we assemble to hear the gospel of Jesus, we hear the prophesying of our own situation. We see glory to God that no matter the situation now, that God says, I will show up and manifest my power to make those who do not believe to come to a place of submission that God is real. And not only is he real, but he is real in your life. Uh, somebody shout, he's real in my life. He's real in my life. If his power were not real in my life, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. His power was not real in my life. I would have taken down from my position and would begin to fist fight with the enemy when all I had to do was stand firm in the word of God. Which lets me know, praise God, that the power is working for us because thirdly, praise God, I found out that the power will keep you. Somebody shout the power. In other words, Peter began to preach and he says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, uh, ready to be revealed at any time and in the last time. Uh, I begin to read the word of God that says, now unto him who is able oh, to keep you from falling. And he says he's going to present me faultless before the presence of his glory. I, He keeps me sometimes when I want to be kept. And I messed around and found out that even when I didn't want to be kept, his power was so powerful in my life that he kept me when I wanted to do wrong. He, he kept me when I wanted just to say, I'm going to do it this one time. Y'all don't hear me. Ah, that every time I put my foot to go in that situation, uh, God began to minister to me. I've already done too much for you. You got the power to stand the test. You got the power to stand what the enemy is trying to put in your mind. And then I begin to explain to the Lord, Lord, ah, the spirit is willing, but now I know that my flesh is some kind of weak. Oh, but God says, you got to remember once have I spoken.
situation and say, Lord, you see my situation because I get with you. And if you don't do something with my mouth, if you don't do something with my flesh, I'm about to mess up. I'm about to do something.
Somebody shout power moves, power moves, power moves. Thank <laughs> you. 